So today I'm going to show you how to set up your own local uh, WordPress installation using this cool software called XAMPP. Um, so XAMPP is a package of software that includes like the Apache web server software and then also a MySQL uh, database software. So it's a great package that allows you to just do this one installation and pretty much everything you need is right there. Uh, this can also be used to host a website even on like the actual internet rather than just locally. Just make sure if you're going to be using it for that that you do a lot of research and everything and understand the security issues that come along with hosting a uh, website on the internet versus just on your local computer. But the things I'll show you in this video are almost identical between how you would do the, the two. It's just if you wanted it to be available on the actual internet then you'll need like a public IP address and that kind of stuff. So. Um, so the very first thing is just go and download the newest version of XAMPP from apachefriends.org, which I'll link you to in the description. Uh, just choose the right one for your operating system. Uh, it's essentially the same between the three. So I'm on Windows, so I'll select this one. And uh, once it's downloaded, then you'll just have this installer. Just double click on it to run it. Um, it'll pop up and give you a warning about where it's installed. So just make sure that you, uh, it's this warning right here. Uh, that you don't install it in the program files folder if you don't want to turn off UAC. UAC is that thing that pops up and asks you uh, are sure you want to install something or not if it requires uh, administrative rights. So if you just leave everything as default, then you don't even have to worry about this message. So uh, just hit OK here, hit Next. Uh, then these are all the options of the different things you can install. You don't need all of them for WordPress. Uh, for example, you don't need fake SendMail or Webalizer and you don't need Tomcat, uh, FTP, or Mercury Mail. But if you want to just leave them checked, uh, they won't conflict with anything, and you might end up using some of them in the future. But the ones that you specifically do need for uh, this tutorial are Apache, MySQL, PHP and Perl, and then PHP MyAdmin. So as long as you have those ones checked, then everything I will show you will work. So just hit Next. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, if you don't want to turn off UAC, you can leave this as just CZAMP, or you can set it up like C Documents ZAMP or something like that. Just make sure that uh, you don't put it in the program files unless you turn off UAC. So then hit Next here, and then just uncheck this so a web website doesn't pop up at the end. Hit Next, Next, and then it'll start installing. Uh, this is a pretty long process. It'll take a few minutes, so uh, I'll continue once it's done. So once XAMPP is finished, um, you'll want to leave this box checked so it opens up the control panel because installing XAMPP doesn't actually run the softwares that it, uh, that it installs. You need to specifically start them afterwards. So uh, just hit finish here, choose your language, and then it'll pop up with the control panel. So the two that we care about right now are just Apache and MySQL. So start both of those. Then if you uh, go to your web browser and type in localhost, you'll get this XAMPP Apache uh, web page right here. So this is essentially run from this uh, XAMPP control panel. Like that's when you start the Apache here. And then MySQL will need to set up uh, to allow for your WordPress installation. So um, next thing to do is go and get WordPress. So if you go to wordpress.org, .org not .com, uh, then you can download the newest version of WordPress right here. And that will download a uh, .zip file of the newest version. So once that's downloaded, it'll just look like this. Um, I have 475, but even if it's a much newer version or even an older version, uh, the installation is all the same, so it doesn't matter. So whichever one you have, it should work pretty much identical to this video. So um, once you have the .zip downloaded, just right click on it and say extract all and hit extract. Uh, there's a lot of files in here, so it takes a couple minutes to extract. So once it's finished, you'll get this uh, folder where it just says WordPress, uh, so that's inside of the WordPress 475 here. Uh, this is the folder they actually care about. So everything in here is the WordPress installation, so this is the folder that you need to uh, copy essentially. So just right click on that and say copy, and then go to your XAMPP installation. So I left it as default, so it's just C, XAMPP, and then htdocs. If you uh, installed it in like your documents folder or something like that, make sure to go to the XAMPP there and then go to htdocs inside that folder. So essentially htdocs is what the Apache server will actually serve to the web page. So in this case, uh, the like if we go here, you'll see it's localhost slash dashboard. That's because it's running what's in this folder. So I'm just going to paste WordPress right here. And now you'll see that I'm able to access WordPress from localhost slash WordPress. 
but we haven't configured anything for WordPress about where to store its data. So it'll ask us a couple questions here and we're gonna to need to actually set up that information. So if we hit let's go here, it asks for the database name, username, password, database host, and table prefix. So this is stuff that we need to set up in MySQL. So we need to set up a database for um, WordPress to use. So if we go to localhost slash PHP my admin, it'll bring us to the MySQL configuration page. So that's something that is part of XAMPP and it only popped up because we started MySQL. So if this wasn't started, you wouldn't be able to get here. So just make sure that anytime you're working on uh, either the MySQL database or on WordPress itself, make sure you have Apache and MySQL selected and, and started. Uh, so if we go back to here, now we need to create a database for um, WordPress to use. So you can call it whatever you want, but if you just click on the new button over here, then you can give it a, whatever the database name is. So it's a good idea to pick something relevant to the website rather than just saying something like WordPress. So let's say your website was something about uh, doing tutorials, uh, then maybe you would call the, uh, the database itself tutorial. Uh, so I'll just, I'll call it that, but uh, really anything is fine here. Just uh, keep it simple essentially, but I would use something different than just WordPress because then it might conflict if you have multiple installations. So then for collation, um, I think if you leave it as the default, it'll still work, but the correct one is actually under the UTF-8 and uh, should be just General CI. So this is the one that you need to select here. So UTF-8 General CI is the one suggested by WordPress, but it's not a I would just go with that one. Uh, if you kind of Google around, you'll understand a bit more about why that is. But um, if you select that one, then hit create. So now it's just an empty database that we've created. So we're a lot of the way there. So that's what we'd be putting in this first one. But now we also need to create a user for that database for uh, WordPress to be able to access it. So that's where this username and password and database host and table prefix come in. So the easiest way to add a user for the uh, database is to go to the privileges tab after clicking on the database on the left and then just hit add new user account here. So with that, we can just automatically have it assign the permissions to that uh, database itself rather than to globally to all databases. So that's important for security uh, that you only want to give permission to the things that it actually needs. So for the username, it's again, not too important, um, but I like to use one that's relevant to the website again. So I'll just uh, call it tutorial. So the same as the, as the database. Um, for the host name, I'm doing this locally, so it's going to be localhost, and then password. I'm just going to give it the password password to keep this simple, but if you were doing this in real life, you should usually generate a password, and it gives you this really nice strong password that it's a bit more difficult to keep track of, so you'd want to use something like LastPass or KeePass, um, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just do password. Um, so then you just want to make sure you leave this box checked right here where it says grant all privileges on database tutorial. So this just makes it so that this user can add tables, do really whatever it wants inside the database tutorial. So then just hit go down here and I think I will get an error message here. So this is actually pretty common if you didn't run XAMPP as administrator, uh, which I usually don't like to run programs as administrator unless I absolutely have to. So uh, there's a little trick to get around this to make it work. So to do that, just go to your uh, to your XAMPP installation here, go back to XAMPP, um, and then go to MySQL, and then just right click and say new folder, and call this lib, and then open up that folder, right click, say new folder, and call this one plugin. So now if I run this again, you'll see that it uh, works fine. So now I've created the uh, the database as well as the user. So now if we go back to uh, WordPress here, then we can put in that information. So our database name is tutorial, or whatever you set it up to in this case. Um, and then the username is again the one you created there. And then the password is whatever you set up as password. I literally just used the string password. So type in whatever you use there. Database host is localhost as long as you set it up that way in the database. And then the ta table prefix is, if you wanna use the same database for multiple WordPress installations, you can change this table prefix. And it's actually not a bad idea to do in general, so then it makes it a bit easier to back up your databases and things, but it'll work if you leave it like this, but it's probably a good idea to change it. So I'm just gonna 
give it a little bit more there. So WordPress tutorial essentially. And then I'll hit submit here. Now, as long as it worked correctly, you'll get this message. But if it wasn't able to connect to the database, it'll give you an error here. So um, that'll give you an indicator if you did anything wrong. Um, but obviously you can see here that it worked fine. So now you can just hit run the install. And now it's gonna ask you a bunch of questions about the WordPress installation itself. So uh, the site title is whatever would be relevant to your site. You can change all this later. Um, but the most important part is to set up a username and password to for your like your admin account. So it's a good idea to use a username here that's not just admin uh, to make it more difficult for like if somebody's using like a brute force attack on your uh, on your server uh, that instead of just guessing admin that you would have a separate like even if you put it as something really simple like tutorial admin or something like that uh, it will still add just a little bit of extra security there. Um, it's not a huge deal but then it's a really good idea also to use a strong password here. Something like just password would probably get your website taken down real quick on the real internet. So it's a good idea to use something secure here. But since I'm just working with this offline just as a tutorial, I'm gonna keep it simple here. Keep it simple to log in so I don't have to save anything. Um, if you use a crappy password, you're gonna have to check this box to confirm the use of it. Then um, set up your uh, an email address. Then if you forget your password and want it to send you a link to reset it, then you will actually be able to access it right here. So uh, I'm just gonna use a, a fake email here. Um, and then this one, if you want this just for, for private use, you would check this. If you want people to be able to find it through search engines, then you leave it unchecked. So then you just hit install WordPress here, and this should go pretty quick, it does. And now the username, just remember what username you selected, hit log in, and then just put in your information here. So I did tutorial admin and password, and then hit enter. And now this is your uh, WordPress website right here. So essentially now we've installed WordPress that you can do whatever you want to on your local computer. So if I uh, go to the back to the XAMPP htdocs folder here, you have your WordPress installation right here. There's all the files that you can access. You can mess with those however you want. Um, the actual website is set up here, but you need to make sure that anytime you want to do like localhost, localhost WordPress, that your Apache and MySQL are started. So if I, for example, stop these and then try and access this, it'll just give me an error that there's nothing there that it can reach. So anytime you want to be working on this, make sure you start these services first. And now it pops right back up again. Um, if you get logged out and you want to get back to your WordPress installation, so if we go here, that's just the default web page it gives. If you want to log in afterwards, you'll have to add the string WP admin to the end of it. And then it'll bring you to your login screen. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you have any questions or uh, if there were any errors during installation, just leave a comment at the bottom and I'll uh, try and help you out. Yeah.